Dear colleagues, are you hearing me? Yes, of course. Let's begin. Now we can start. First of all, dear colleagues, with a feeling of special responsibility, I hasten to announce the opening of our ACPM Congress. We have been waiting for this event for several years. In person, such as the harsh condition of the current time. But in spite of the everything, we still found the opportunity to organize our Congress online. And now it remains only to wish all of us successful work and interesting exchange of views for the benefit of our patients. Our first message, psychosomatic medicine in Russia and Eastern Siberia. The speaker is your obedient servant, Sabenikov Vasily. I want to introduce myself. I am the head of the Department of Psychiatry and Medical Psychology of Irkutsk Medical University. So, psychosomatic medicine in Russia and Eastern Siberia. The scientific medicine and psychosomatic in Russia. The formation and development of scientific medicine in the 18th, 19th century in Russia took place under the sign of the Hippocratic imperative to treat not the disease, but the patient. The founders of the Russian therapeutic school considered as the most important aspects of clinical analysis, the study of a person's lifestyle, his emotional state and thinking. We can find in the notes of one of the famous Russian therapists, Matvey Modrov, such a conclusion. Some people get sick from bodily causes, others from mental disturbance, and mental medicine heals the body. Here you can see outstanding Russian doctors of 18th, 19th century who laid the foundation for a holistic approach to the patient. Mudrov and others. The principles of holistic approach to the patient was followed well-known Russian psychiatrist and neurologist. The best from this series, Balinsky, Ria, Korsakov, Sergei, Bechterev, Vladimir. There was conceptual rivalry between psychics and somatics in the development of psychosomatic medicine. It is known that in the West, psychosomatic medicine developed within the framework of psychological, psychoanalytic concepts. Founders Freud, Alexander, Dunbar. Psychosomatic medicine has been defined as applied psychoanalysis in medicine. In the USSR, during the period of dominance of communist ideology, the study of the psychological aspects of diseases was not widespread. Moreover, the theoretical provisions of the Western psychosomatic medicine were even recognized anti-scientific. The theoretical basis for the study of psychosomatic relationships in our country is the reflex theory. On the basis of formulated by Sechenev ideas about the reflex basis of mental activity, 
The study of reflex connections between cortical centers and centers of visceral brain with the substance of this neurophysiological direction where Soviet scientists Pavlov, Bikov,
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am Chiharu Kubo, president of Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine and president of Nakamura Gakuen University. I am delighted to be here today at the 19th Congress of the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine. It has been a long road to Irkutsk, but we are finally here. I can't compliment Professor Soberinkov and the organizing committee enough on their patience and perseverance through the two years the Congress had to be postponed because of the COVID crisis. Firstly, I would like to introduce my hometown, Fukuoka City. Fukuoka City is located in the southeastern Japan, a present friendly coastal city with a population of 1.6 million and the largest metropolis on the island of Kyushu. As you look at the map, you will notice that Fukuoka lies very close to the Asian cont uh, cont uh, continent. Thanks to this location, Fukuoka has prospered as a gateway to the continental Asia since ancient times. It is 3,500 kilometers from Fukuoka to Irkutsk. I would like to talk about the following items. First, the development of Japanese psychosomatic medicine. Second, what is psychosomatic medicine? Third, research into psychosomatic medicine. Fourth, the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine. This slide shows the history of Japanese psychosomatic medicine. In 1959, it was established in Kyushu University as the Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine. In 1961, the magazine Saxon Medicine was published. The Faculty of Medicine of Kyushu University attached Psychosomatic Medicine Research Institute was established. In 1963, the Department of Psychosomatic Medicine, Faculty of Medicine of Kyushu University was established. In 1975, the name of Japanese Society of Saxon Medicine was changed. In 1976, the name of the magazine Saxon Medicine was changed. In 1979, we joined the Japan Medical Association. In 1985, a system for the authorization of doctors began. In 1990, psychosomatic medicine therapy was permitted by the insurance system. In 1991, the new treatment guideline for psychosomatic medicine was completed. In 1997, approval was given for the Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine. In 2004, a medical care psychology system was started. In 98, we changed from the authorization of doctor system to the specialist system. In 2022, 2,900 doctors are members of the Japanese Society of Saxon Medicine. The 18th World Congress of Psychosomatic Medicine was held in 25 in Kobe, Japan. It was a, I was a co president of the Congress. This slide shows the opening ceremony of the Congress. The Emperor and Empress of Japan attended this Congress. We were honored to have them in attendance. 
the emperor gave a welcome、uh, address at the opening ceremony. This is a photo of Dr. Ikemi when he was 63 years old. Dr. Ikemi founded the Japanese Society of Saxophone Medicine in 1959. In 1961, with the support of the Japanese Ministry of Education, Dr. Ikemi established the first Institute of Psychosomatic Medicine in Japan at Kyushu University and was appointed as the Professor of the Institute. In 1963, this institute developed into a new department of psychosomatic medicine. He devoted his time and talent toward integrating oriental somatopsychic and self regulation methodologies with Western medicine, including yoga, Qigong. Then meditation and acupuncture. This slide shows the year in which the university department were established. The department of Kyushu University was established 1961,、uh, 69 years ago. After that, Tokyo, Tohok, Nihon, Toho, Kansai, Kagoshima, Kink University were established. International University of Health and Welfare was established four years ago. There were now nine universities in Japan that have d e p a r t m e n t of s y c h o s o m a t i c Medicine. In June 29, The Japanese Society of s y c h o s o m a t i c Medicine celebrated our 50th anniversary since its foundation by Professor Ikemi and approximately 100 colleagues. We have grown rapidly and currently have、uh, 2,900 active members, including internal medicine specialists,、uh, psychiatrists. Uh, psychologists and co medical staff members. We have five associated sub -asso associations consisting of pediatric psychosomatic medicine, women's psychosomatic medicine, psychosomatic internal medicine, psychosomatic dermatology, and psychosomatic dentistry. In addition to the National Society. We have several, seven regional psychosomatic medicine societies. There are two major,、uh, two journals of psychosomatic medicine, Shinshin Igak, Japanese language, Bio Psychosocial Medicine, English journal, Impact Factor is 3.0. We would be Happy if you were to submit your research to this journal. Psychosomatic care for Japanese pa patients with me mental health problems has progressed dramatically over the past few decades. The health ministry has included most psychosomatic diseases for coverage under the National health insurance system, and most hospitals have sections that deal spe specifically with psychosomatic diseases. Most medical schools include psychosomatic medicines as part of their basic educational programs for doctors,、mm -hmm. and continuing education is. Provided by the many medical societies that focus on such areas as allergy, pain, eating disorders, psych oncology, depression, and oriental medicine. Our doctors are licensed by the Ministry of Health and can receive board certifications by the Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine. 
this is a Kyushu University hospital. I was a director of this hospital for six years from uh, 28 to 2014. The hospital has 1,400 beds and 3,000 outpatients per day. Next, I would like to talk about psychosomatic medicine. Psychosomatic me medicine can be defined as a holistic medicine that considers mm -hmm. not only physical but also psychological, social, and existential aspects of illness and that offers a more general and integrated approach to medicine. The definition of psychosomatic disorders is pathophysiological state of somatic disorders that have been closely affected by psychosocial factors in their onset and development and in which organic and or dysfunctional regions are found. Rule out psychiatric disorder, anxiety disorder or depression accompanied by mainly somatic symptoms. Psychosomatic treatment includes physical therapy in internal medicine and other clinical field. Second, pharma pharmacotherapy can be applied with psychotropic drugs such as antidepressant, anti-anxiety mm -hmm. drugs, and hypnotics and sometimes Chinese herbal medicine are used. Third, guideline of lifestyle such as diet, sleep, and exercise. Fourth, psychotherapy is used. There are many forms of psychotherapy such as counseling, behavioral cognitive therapy, autogenic training, muscle relaxation, hypnosis, psychoanalytic uh, therapy, transactional uh, analysis, biofeedback therapy, family therapy, occupational therapy, play therapy, music therapy, and group therapy. In addition, oriental medicine uh, component such as Chinese herbal medicine, acupuncture, moxibustion, Morisa therapy, Nikan therapy, and the yoga therapies are widely used. Next, I would like to talk about the research into psychosomatic medicine in Japan. Basic research is being done in areas such as psych, neuro, and crying immunology, and brain, uh, brain imaging. Clinical research is being done in the field of eating disorders pain, diabetes, bronchial asthma, ether bowel syndrome, depression, and cancer, psych-oncology, all supported by specialized professional organizations. This slide shows the effect of conflict emotion induced by hypnosis on colon movement when there was conflict a marked spasm occurred, as shown on the right. This clinical experiment was done at the Department of Psychomedicine of Kyushu University in 1961. Our research has been shown the relation between our 50th anniversary. Since its foundation by Professor Ikemi and approximately uh, four years ago. There were now nine universities in Japan that have Department of Psychosomatic Medicine. In June 29, the Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine celebrated our 50th anniversary. Since its foundation by Professor Ikemi, and approximately 100 colleagues. We have grown rapidly and currently have uh, 2,900 
active members, including internal medicine specialists, uh, psychiatrists, uh, psychologists, and co medical staff members. We have five associated sub -asso associations consisting of pediatric psychosomatic medicine, women's psychosomatic medicine, psychosomatic internal medicine, psychosomatic dermatology, and psychosomatic dentistry. In addition to the National Society, we have several, seven regional psychosomatic medicine societies. There are two major, uh, two journals of psychosomatic medicine, Shinshin Igak, Japanese language, Biopsychosocial Medicine, English Journal, Impact Factor is 3.0. We would be happy if you were to submit your research to this journal. Psychosomatic care for Japanese pa patient with me mental health problems has progressed dramatically over the past few decades. The health ministry has included most psychosomatic diseases for coverage under the national health insurance system, and most hospitals have sections that deal spe specifically with psychosomatic diseases. Most and hypnotics, and sometimes Chinese herbal medicine are used. Third, guideline of lifestyle such as diet, sleep, and exercise. Fourth, psychotherapy is used. There are many forms of psychotherapy such as counseling, behavioral cognitive therapy, autogenic training, muscle relaxation, hypnosis, psychoanalytic uh, therapy, transactional uh, analysis, biofeedback therapy, family therapy, occupational therapy, play therapy, music therapy, and group therapy. In addition, oriental medicine uh, component such as Chinese herbal medicine, acupuncture, moxibustion, Morisa therapy, Nikan therapy, and yoga therapies are widely used. Next, I would like to talk about
This is the opening ceremony. Many participants registered and gathered from worldwide countries and areas. Professor Yujiro Ikeni, Congress President, the top leader of Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine, states, At the two-year stand of VIP, as like as you can see in this slide, excellent psychosomatist of the executive board members of ICTM, gather up coming from the world, such as Professor Morton Riser, the president of At the tier stand of VIP, as like as you can see in this slide, excellent psychosomatist of the executive board members of ICPM, another up coming from the world, such as Professor Morton Reiser, the president of ICPM, Professor Knobel, Krakowski, Tim Ball, and so on VIP professors. I had good fortune to participate in this historical ceremony and to take the chair and the speaker at this February Congress 1977 when I was 38 years old yet, younger psychosomatist. This slide shows one of Gala Dinner Party snap pictures. Maiko-san, famous beautiful girls with traditional kimono of Kyoto, were invited to entertain. This slide is the most important precious picture of mine. Who shot the photo with Professor Morton Riser, president of ICPM, at this International Convention of Fourth World Congress in Kyoto. He was the first president of ICPM. Very lucky chance, very, very happy. During days of this World Congress, staff members worked and managed there in Congress office room for discussing towards successful results. Managing staff were consisted of Japanese professors and others, such as Professor Ikemi, Ishikawa, Suematsu, Tsui, Katsura, and so on, famous psychosomatists including me, Ishizu, as the youngest member. The idea to make the Asian chapter of ICPM was firstly proposed by Dr. Taisaku Kasura, professor of psychosomatic medicine, Nihon University School of Medicine. He said, let's create the Asian chapter of the ICPM with Asian colleagues joining us together. Very, very fortunately, I just stayed there, standing by near Dr. Katra. So I really directly heard this epochal, important proposal remarks of him with my own view. 我々も呼ぶかよし
行きましょうよと。All members of staying there soon agreed with Katra's splendid proposal. It was impressive effort concerning the beginning preparation for creation of Asian chapter ICPM AC, that is ACPM, was started at the time, September 1977. Preparation for creation of the ICPM AC, that is ACPM. As like you can see in this slide, from September 1977 to April 1982, preparation for creation of the Asian chapter of ICPM was proceeded with leadership by Mr. Yusho Ikemi. Asian chapter of the International Science Commerce Nation ICTMAC was founded in Tokyo, Japan on April 12, 1982. First president was Toshi Ishikawa, Japan. Two vice presidents were Mahalindo Mahadevan, Malaysia, and Burton G. Burton Bradley, Papua New Guinea. And General Secretary was Suihara Tsukui, Japan. Secretary Office was placed at the Tokyo University School of Medicine, Japan. The main members in the early stage were, you can see in the slide, Ikemi, Ishikawa, Tsutsui, Katsura, Nakagawa, Suematsu, Suzuki, and others from Japan and Shen Lin, Taiwan, Shek Yang Khan, Korea, Maharinga Mahadevan, Malaysia, Burton G. Burton Bradley, Papua New Guinea, Amarendra Narayan Singh, India, and others from Asian countries. I hope to suggest for your participants, please refer the paper as you can see in this slide, which precisely described concerning history, present, future perspectives of ACPM already published in academic journal, Biopsychosocial Medicine. Establishment and Development, ICPMAC. First Congress of the ICPMAC was held by President Yujiro Ikemi in Tokyo, Japan, May on 19 and 20, 1984. This slide shows Congress President of the first ICPMAC, Professor Yujiro Ikemi. Imperial Palace in Tokyo. Consequently, annual Congress of ICPM AC have been opened approximately every two years. Looks like in this slide, in Japan, India, Malaysia, Taiwan, China, and Korea. Name change the renewal Congress. The Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine, ACPM, from ICPMAC. The Congress of 10th to 18th had been held in Taiwan, Okinawa, Japan, Australia, Korea, China, Mongolia, Indonesia, Fukuoka, Japan, and Korea. Many themes are shown in this slide. They are very interesting and important for Asian countries. 
such as concerning not only general psychosomatic disorders, but also oriental medicine. Well, I'd like to open the slide show of Congress. Please enjoy every abstract and pictures of main Congresses. Slide show. At the fifth Congress in Taipei, Taiwan, main theme was panic and anxiety. He guided us to the former medical school of Japanese Taihoku. Imperial University. At the sixth Congress in Fukuoka, Japan, Congress President was Professor Chihara Kubo, the present president of ACPM. Main theme was East and West Symposium of Psychosomatic Medicine. Professor Wolfram Schufer famous psychosomatic internist was invited from Germany. At the seventh Congress in Darian, China, Congress President Dr. Liu Zengang main theme was psychosomatic medicine East and West. Many participants presented at the Congress as in this slide. Dr. Liu guided us to the historical battle place, famous height 203, Nihaku San At the eighth Congress in Seoul, Korea, Congress President was Professor Byung Il Ming. Senior famous advisor Professor Jun Sik Huang was invited to the Congress. At the ninth Congress in Tokyo, Japan, hosted by Congress President Suiharu Tsutsui, the important issue were discussed. This conference name was changed from the Asian chapter of the International College of Psychosomatic Medicine, ICPMAC, to the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine. ACPM and the presidency was handed over from Tsutsui to Chiharu Kubo. The new president was born. At the 10th ACPM new name Congress in Taipei, Taiwan, held by Congress President Professor Minbin Li. The main theme was health promotion. 250 participants attended at this Congress. At the 11th ACPM Congress in Okinawa, Japan, held by me, Professor Ishizu, the main theme was culture and psychosomatic medicine. And Added a special guest from Mongolia and the Micronation were invited. Professor Tsrenko Fugin, a Kagwasan president of National Health Science University of Mongolia, appeared the candidate of the fifth ACPM, which will be open in Mongolia at this executive board meeting. At the 11th ACPM in Melbourne, Australia, held by Congress President Lorraine Denastein, the main theme was gender-related psychosomatic medicine. At the 13th ACPM in Seoul, Korea, Congress President Bon Yul Ho 
the main theme was harmony of mind and body search to a new paradigm. At the 14th ACPM in Beijing, China, held by Congress President Zhao Zhi, Chinese and Oriental medicine world focused. After Congress, we visited the Great Wall, the World Heritage Site. Mongolia Society of Psychosomatic Medicine was established and supported to make the arriving ACPM Congress successful. The 15th ACPM in Ulaanbaatar, first time in Mongolia, was held by Congress President Trenkugin El Kagwasren at Tingskan Hotel August 24 and 25, 2012. Two ministers of education, sciences, and welfare of Mongolian government were invited. These slides are shown the opening ceremony and the memorial pictures of all participants. Gala dinner party grandly was performed at Gair, traditional Mongolian hog. We visited the great step of grass. and Great Emperor Chinggis Khan Monument. We are preparing a discussion towards the 6th ACPM, Professor Kubo, President of ACPM, and I, Vice President Ishiz, visited Chipito Mangunkusmo Hospital. Division of Psychosomatic Department of Internal Medicine, University of the Indonesia, on February 10, 2013. At the 16th ACPM in Jakarta, Indonesia, held by Congress President Endojado Mujadid, Dr. Rudy Putoranto. Secretary General, Dr. Hamza Shatri and staff managed well. Indonesian welcome party was played with traditional music. We all participants enjoyed well. At the 17th ACPM in Fukuoka, Japan, Congress President was Professor Nobuyuki Sudo. Mrs. Professor Ikemi, who was over 90 years old, was invited to the Congress in Kyushu University School of Medicine. Garadina was held in Hakata Bay Cruising. Congress president was Professor Byung Sung Kim. Senior famous advisor, Professor Junshik Huang, who was over 90 years old too, was invited to the Congress. And, and also cultural background was discussed. Well, next, I'd like to mention Professor Sobenikov, Vasily, and Irkutsk. First meeting with Professor Sobenikov Vasily was the 56th Congress of Japanese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine, which held by Professor Masato Murakami in Tokyo, June 2016, 60 years ago from now. Sobenikov was accompanied by President Professor Terenku Niel Kagwasre in Mongolia, who invited by Congress President Murakami.
Dobranikov took a speech and introduced Irkutsk and the Baikal Lake. This, I, this slide is Professor Dobranikov and I at the Congress in Tokyo 2016. And then I had the first visit to Irkutsk State University when invited by Professor Sobenikov for the preliminary business meeting towards the 19th ACPM Congress, according to constant and cooperation with President Kubo on August 10, 2016, five years ago from now. This shows the Irkutsk State University. We visited the International Exchange Affair and met Professor Krupskaya Samara, VIP of University. She welcomed us and full financial support with warm hearted. And next, I visited the University Hospital and School of Medicine. The first preliminary business meeting was held with Professor Sobennikov and his supported important staff, such as Professor Lyubov Lichikova, Director of Medicine, Professor Bairova Tatiana, Professor Farid Beriarov and the son of Irkutsk State University. They uh, consisted of various field professors, psychiatrists, pediatrists, internists, psychologists, and so on. History and the present state of ICPM was introduced by my lecture. Then, we discussed many various questions and answers. After about two hours discussion, we got the fruitful results forward to hold the 19th ACPM in Irkutsk. After return back to Japan, I precisely informed to Professor Kubo, president of ACPM, and then discussion about this item was proceeded at the board meeting of ACPM. Well, I will show you some pictures of Irkutsk. This is a symbol of Irkutsk. I and my wife took the picture with Kozak. The biker cruising This slide shows the Baikal Lake and Angra River, which is only one outflow river from Lake. Irkutsk had been consisted near this Angra River side. Perspective. Finally, I would like to mention concerning perspectives towards the future of ACPM. Recently, the concept of psychosomatic medicine is expanded from medicine with psychosomatic correlation, so-called mind and body correlation, to biopsychosocial, ethical, ecological, medical model. Especially, ethical and ecological viewpoint is added with greater importance. Number one is enlargement of the concept of psychosomatic medicine. This slide shows the spontaneous regression of lung cancer, edited by Professor Ikemi. Another important issue for perspectives is health promotion based on psychoneuroendocrino-immunomodulation. Mind and body are closely correlated, but mental condition 
induce psychosomatic stress related disorder under mechanism of pathogenesis. On the other hand, good mental condition produce psychosomatic healthy state and longevity under salutogenesis mechanism proposed by Antonovsky. In recent research, neurogenesis in brain and epigenetics in gene is noticed. They are paid more attention with attractive interest. Integration of Eastern and Western medicine was emphasized by Professor Ikemi, Professor Kazuhiko Atsumi, Professor Zhao Jif, Professor Amarandra Narayan Singh, and so on. Well, by the way, psychosomatic disaster medicine will become important item, such from tsunami, nuclear radiation, pandemic COVID-19, war and battle, and so on. Number six is one more important point. More development of basic research of inner brain, so-called neuroscience, such as crosstalk between brain and organs, crosstalk between organs and organs, and so on. In order to pursuit of happiness, well-being subjectively and ecologically will be the most important for the ACPM in the future. Official board of present members of ACPM is shown in this slide. President of ACPM is Professor Chiharu Kubo, the great man. Vice presidents, including me, counselors, directors, auditors, are consisted from Japan, Taiwan, Korea, China, Mongolia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, Micronesia, Canada, and Russia. Looks like in this slide. The 19th ACPM is open now. This picture is a trademark of chocolate book, Irkutsk. I sincerely express congratulations to Irkutsk staff and Congress President Sobenikov Vasily. We hope ACPM will be expanded to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz, Uzbekistan, and so on in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. And thank you for your one words about us and now our next speaker shin fukuda japan brain gut interactions as psychosomatic realities in irritable bowel syndrome Please, no, no, it's a, you know, last slide. Please start my audio. It's a, you know, the latest slide. So. Otherwise, I would like to, you know, show my slide from my computer. Okay.
Can you see my computer screen at this moment? Please let me know, someone. You can see brain gut interactions as psychosomatic realities in irritable bowel syndrome. Can you see? That's right. If anyone can, you know, make a comment on the chat, please take a message to the chat. Can you see my slide? Yes or no, please. Can you see my slide now? Okay, so I would like to get started. Thank you, Professor Chiharu Kubo, as the president of the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine, for inviting me as a speaker. During my uh, presentation, I would like to share the novel aspect of irritable bile syndrome and brain gut interactions with audience. This is my disclosure. In Roma 4, functional gastrointestinal disorders are renamed into the disorders of gut brain interactions, DGBI. It should be noted that the gut and the brain reciprocally communicate each other. Therefore, meaning of gut brain and that of brain gut originally imply the same phenomena. IBS defined in the Loma 4 criteria as follows. Recurrent abdominal pain on average at least one day per week in the last three months associated with two or more of the following. Related to defecation, associated with a change in frequency of stool and or associated with a change in form of stool. Amit Baba and his colleagues clarified worldwide prevalence of functional gastrointestinal disorder, FGIDs. Prevalence of FGIDs or DGBI is 14.7%, that of IBS is 4.1%, and that of functional constipation is 11.7%. This global epidemiological study also depicted difference in IBS prevalence among countries when, uh, which are known to uh, have different psychological stress, genes, cultures, foods, and gut microbiota. Recent epidemiological analysis also revealed increased risk of depression anxiety in increased number of GI symptoms. The other features, including IBS severity, physical symptoms, quality of life, number of medications, and doctor visits are also aggravated with increased number of GI symptoms. Epidemiological evidence also reveals that individuals with functional gastrointestinal disorders, including IBS, develop anxiety disorders or depressive disorders in 12 years later. Therefore, understanding of central processing of visceral sensation is also a crucial issue in IBS research. In our earlier study, we measured chronic motility during loading the mirror drawing stress. Chronic motility index increased during and after the stress in IBS patients. IBS repeatedly reported as stress-related disorder. So slopes of regression equations relating bowel symptoms to stress is high in IBS patients, but not in normal subjects or patients with functional bowel disorder as incomplete symptoms sets of IBS. We injected corticotropin releasing hormone, GRH, to normal men. Segmental contractions of the colon were increased in uh, by CRH. In IBS patients, exogenous administration of CRH induced robust colonic motility here. Not only the brain, but only the gut in IBS patients differentially 
response to the CRH administration from controls. Administration of CRH to IBS patients replicated our earlier findings of the exaggerated chronic motility. In this particular study, chronic motility was evaluated by Barostat. Especially IBS men were more responsive to CRH administration. Psychosocial stress is processed in the brain and the signal is conducted to the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. CRH is released in the PBN and stimulates adrenocorticotropic hormone ACTH secretion from the pituitary gland. ACTH stimulates adrenocortex and releases cortisol. At the same time, CRH act uh, activates sympathetic nervous system and stimulates cardiovascular system. CRH also activates sacral parasympathetic uh, outflow and stimulates chronic motility. Therefore, exogenous CRH evokes exaggerated chronic motility in IBS patients. Interestingly, uh, chronic distension also releases cortisol and CRH in the paraventricular nucleus. We reported decreased uh, scavenger macrophages in the sub-epithelial layer in IBS patients because macrophage contains uh, glucotin, so we suspected that CRH receptor 2 effect may be decreased and CRH R1 action, receptor 1 action, may be upregulated. So mast cell degranulation due to stress and increased CRH signal may also cause secretion uh, and permeability changes as well as the sensory motor changes. How do intraluminal environment and brain dysfunction relate each other? A good example is a key molecule, granulate cyclase C, GCC, detecting the intraluminal environment. Granulate cyclase C is stimulated by granulin and urogranulin and heat-stable enterotoxins. Actually, linacrotide is also proven to increase chloride ion secretion by intracellular accumulation uh, of cyclic GMP. Together, uh, cyclic GMP is secreted into the sub-epithelial space and inhibits pain fibers adjacent to the gut epithelial cells. Actually, in our clinical studies, higher dose of linacrotide surely improves complete spontaneous bowel movement and abdominal pain, abdominal discomfort in patients with IBS, with constipation, IBS-C. Visceral pain is conducted by the fine spinal afferent neurons, which makes synapses with the laminar one neurons. And it ascends the spinal cord and activates ceramic nuclei and parabrachial nucleus. Thus, pain signal is processed in the wide range of the uh, brain regions. <clears throat> and the descending pain modulatory pathway are also present here. Opiodiagic, noradrenergic, and serotonergic neurons may uh, play roles uh, mainly in the pain inhibition. There are key brain regions responsible to colonic response, abdominal pain, and anxiety in humans. Meta-analysis of the brain imaging on the rectal stimulation in patients with IBS versus controls indicated activation of the pain matrix here. Especially in the red colored area in IBS patients, thalamus, insula, anterior cingulate cortex, amygdala, and brainstem are more activated in response to visceral stimulation than in controls. Extensive functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI studies, depicted two representative visceral uh, pain module and their uh, abnormal activities in IBS patients. One is homeostatic afferent network, which consists 
of brainstem, thalamus insula, and mid cingulate cortex. And another is emotional arousal network, including amygdala and sub regions of the anterior cingulate cortex here. It is of interest to find the phantom visceral pain in the uh, brain imaging studies. Previous expectation or experience of visceral uh, nociception evokes more activation in the mid cingulate cortex than no stimulation. So visceral pain can be sensed even when there is no actual visceral stimulation. Conditioned response in the brain is also present in IBS patients. Please imagine the, you know, uh, Ian Pavlov's studies. Uncertain cue versus certain cue before corrector dissension more activates the middle cingulate, uh, posterior cingulate, precuneus, and the other brain area in IBS patients than in controls. We previously reported that Analogistic suggestions can reduce pain sensation evoked by the electrical stimulation of the rectum. The amplitude of visceral sensory evoked potential is also reduced, it's a green, you know, colored curve, by the analogistic suggestion. So, administration of histamine H1 receptor antagonist dichlorophenylamine changes the wave homes of visceral sensory evoked potential here. Very interestingly, visceral pain signature is uh, recently identified by us. There is a neurologic pain signature which commonly works at somatic pain and visceral pain in the brain. Moreover, regions more strongly activated by visceral stimulation than somatic pain in the, uh, included a thalamus, lentiform nucleus, amygdala, and caudal parahippocampal gyrus, fusiform gyrus, lingual gyrus, cuneus, precuneus, posterior cingulate cortex, middle temporal gyrus, inferior and superior parietal lobule, and precentral and middle frontal gyrus. Brain circuitry, especially related to IBS pain, is summarized here. Laminar neurons activate the parabrachial nucleus, which in turn stimulates the amygdala and hypothalamus. Laminar neurons also activate the thalamus, the insula, the cingulate cortex, and the prefrontal cortex. Now, there are many reports on altered microbiota in IBS patients. And in our study, IBS patients showed significantly more bacterial number of bionera and lactobacillus than controls. Actually, lactobacillus produces lactic acid from glucose, and bionera turns lactic acid into acetic and the propionic acid. So actually, intraluminal concentration of acetic here and propionic acid total and total acids in average patients was significantly increased than that of controls. There is a report that pain sensing molecule trip V1 and substance P are increased in the neurons in the gut mucosa in IBS patients compared to controls. Therefore, upregulated regulated trip V1 and increased intraluminal acetic acid or propionic acid are likely to happen in IBS patients. So that is true. We compared IBS patients with higher acetic acid group and those with lower acid group here. Higher acid groups showed significantly higher scores of abdominal pain, abdominal bloating, and lower general health of quality of life than lower acid group. When we use the propionic acid label as a marker, one-way analysis of variance of symptoms and the quality of life showed significant group difference. High acid groups showed significant higher score of abdominal pain and a total score of GSRS than the other groups. Moreover, 
high acid group showed significantly higher scores of IBS severity index, and this is a very important. Factor three score of alexithymia. It's a you know one of personality. So this implies the personality may be dependent on the product of gut microbiota. We further analyzed how gut microbiota influence on the metabolites and neurotransmitter during symptomatic exacerbation in IBS. Alpha diversity is significantly lower in IBS patients than in control. However, alpha diversity of IBS patients significantly increased at symptomatic exacerbation uh, than at baseline. So there are several changes in increased action of bacteria, decreased uh, bacteroides, and pharmacutes uh, was increased in IBS patients compared to you know, controls. This figure illustrates uh, taxonomic composition of transcript and MGB053 uh, and 4. Relative abundance of gut microbiota of butyrate synthesis and propionate synthesis significantly decreases at symptomatic exacerbation in IBS patients. Especially, Clostridia DRS showed the most remarkable decrease uh, at the symptomatic change. Uh, we also analyzed the other aspects of microbiota in IBS with diarrhea patients. So, IBS D patients show more oral pharmacutes, phytobacteria, and proctobacteria. At IBS symptomatic exacerbation, pharmacutes and action bacteria increase with glutamate, GABA, tryptophan, and lactate iotropins. Among microbiota, uh, build bacterium longum, Luminococcus gnibus, Brautia, Doria, and Lacnospira increase. So, this change may be, you know, the key factor of the symptomatic exacerbation in IBS. So, a systematic review of gut microbiota in IBS patients showed decreased bacterium and uh, fecal bacterium and increased lactobacillae and bacteroides and enterobacteriae here. A short chain fatty acid always mucosal protective. So this is a slide from the diabetologist. And they propose the concept that propionate and acetate uh, produced by Bionera, which was increased in my uh, slide, uh, reduce mucin synthesis, weaker tight junctions, increase uh, gut permeability, and induce inflammation in the body. However, butyrate has opposite actions. Therefore, combination of gut microbiota may be the key factor of the bifurcation. So, in average patients, such a things may happen also. So, recently, new pharmacotherapy for, uh, you know, disorders of gut-brain interaction is also developing. So, sodium glucose co-transporter 1, SGLT1 inhibitor, is an agent to increase intraluminal glucose in the gut. It is effective on patients with chronic constipation, including IBS with constipation patients. Gut microbiota are suggested to be altered by increased substrate in the gut lumen. So this is very important. And uh, recent neuropod cells and SGLT1 are focused as the key cells and the key molecule of gut to brain signal. Actually, gut microbiota may influence on quality of life and depression. Persons with more prebotera, including coprococcus, showed better QOL, while those with more bacteroidus enterotype 2 showed worse QOL here. Because coprococcus can produce dopamine metabolites, it may relate to dopaminergic production in the brain. So depressive individuals have more bacteroidus uh, intro type 2 and less probotera here. Several candidate genes relating visceral sensations have been explored in abyss patients. 
Among them, quite interesting progression has been reported in the system rating, uh, you know, corticotropin releasing hormone, GRH receptor 1, uh, that's our study, and the serotonin 3 receptor, serotonin transporter, sodium uh, channel, and trip V1. Concerned to serotonin 3 uh, receptor, 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, ramocetron for IBSD women induces more remission of abnormal pain than placebo. So uh, we have also clarified more effect of ramocetron on FDA composite endpoint than controls. So concerning to the gut to brain signal, serotonin may also involve not only in neurotransmission in the gut, but also in the brain. So network connectivity analysis revealed interregional relationship may be dependent on genes and stimuli. At baseline in individual with SSD genotype of serotonin transporter, perigenial ACC uh, has negative impact on the amygdala. However, at visceral stimulation in individuals with SSD genotype, hippocampus here uh, has positive impact on the amygdala. So, stored negative memory in the hippocampus may influence on the individuals with SSD genotype. And CRH receptor 1 genes are the candidate gene for IBS. We reported that CRH receptor 2 genes are also the candidates. So, data from UCLA replicated our study association with CRH receptor 1 genotypes and IBS are present, and that may change the alteration in the stress response in IBS patients. In the rat brain, microinjection of CRH into the central nucleus of the amygdala causes more visceral motor response than control. This sensitization was also blocked by pretreatment of CRH receptor 1 antagonist here. In the mouse brain, colorectal distension induces activations of the CRH neurons in the central nucleus of the amygdala. So administration of oxytocin antagonist induced more exaggeration of activation of CRH neurons here. So this indicates resilient role of oxytocin neurons in the IBS brain. In our PET study, showed exaggerated amygdala response to CRH administration in IBS patient. When we added colorectal distension to the condition, amygdala in heresy controls could respond here. So by contrast, IBS patient failed to respond to the visceral stimulation after intravenous infusion of CRH. This indicates allostatic load of the amygdala in IBS patient. Very interesting. In our functional MRI study, activation of the supragenial ACC in response to the corrector distension is negatively correlated to the CRH-induced ACTH secretion here. However, this is a normal response. In IBIS patients, this negative relation is completely lost here. It's a white dot. So uh, I skipped this slide, and we loaded Wisconsin card sorting test to the IBS patient and found dysfunction and atrophy of the DLPFC in IBS patients. Uh, after the error feedback, uh, control showed activation of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. By contrast, IBS patients did not respond to the Wisconsin card sorting test. Therefore, impaired functions of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex underlies central mechanisms of uh, vulnerable stress response in IBS patients. Moreover, IBS is a risk factor not only anxiety or depression, but also the dementia or Parkinson's disease. So this epidemiological data are 
コンダクタン、あ、いわゆるコンド、コンコーダントウィザー、インペアードファンクション。or the prefrontal cortex in IBS patients. So,、uh, we can stimulate the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex by the repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulations and induce the you know, beneficial change here. So,、uh, this is the summary of the slides. So, we try to, you know,、uh, local pathological events together with central mechanism,、uh, sequential phenomena in IBS patients. So, gut microbiota and increase、uh, gut permeability and low grade inflammation may sensitize the neurons and this may conduct it to the brain and change the brain function. So,、uh, this is a summary of the how the peripheral signal affects the central mechanism and our emotion and the stress response in humans. So, this is a you know, summary and a concluded slide. So, Brain gut and gut brain functions is a very key molecule and a key factor for the determining、uh, human behavior and emotion. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? <laughs> If you have any questions,、uh, let me know. Thank you for your attention. Any comments、uh, from the chair or any questions from the audience? Oh, yes. Now you are hearing me. Our next speaker, Professor Yangun Yuan, China, Psychosomatic Medicine in China. Please. Please, Dr. Yuan. Some technical problems. Excuse us. Yes,、uh, Christian. Yes, please. Christian, take us Professor Koba, Professor Sobanikov. Yes. Dear Chairman, my name is Yuan Yonggui, Chairman of Chinese. Chinese society. Yes,、uh, Christian Professor Koba is is a、uh, brief his, history of psychosomatic medicine in China. Second is、uh, the current clinic model of psychosomatic medicine in China. Third. Uh, classification and、uh, diagnostic criteria of、uh, psychosomatic re related disorders in China. Fourth, stand standardized 
diagnostic and uh, treatment guideline of uh, psychosomatic related disorders in China. Fifth research progress of uh, so psychosomatic medicine in China. And the last one is uh, the highly quality development of a psychosomatic medicine in China. First, we are talking about uh, the brief history of uh, psychosomatic medicine in China. Uh, before uh, 1981, there was a lack of attention of psychosomatic medicine, medical psychology, traditional Chinese medicine. In 1981, workshop, workshop on teaching work in psychiatry, national workshop on mental health in general hospital, national mental health work backbone, backbone uh, training course. In uh, 1986, psychosomatic medicine group, Chinese men Mental Health Association set up, set up. Chinese Mental Health Journal published and the National Psychosomatic Medicine Academic Seminar. In 1993, Chinese Society of Psychosomatic Medicine set up, CSP. CSPM. 2013, the National Mental Health Law of the People's Republic of China was implemented. Nowadays, 24 provinces and 54 cities and the 20 specialist groups was set up in China, in China. Now, CSPM compositions. Now, in China, we have set up a, a 20 established uh, Established uh, group, for example, about uh, uh, psychocardiological groups and psychosomatic gastroenterology group and psychosomatic on college, psychosomatic dermatology. and uh, about uh, uh, psychosomatic uh, pediatrics and uh, surgery and uh, obstetrics and uh, general knowledge and the psycho pain medicine and the psychosomatic rehabilitation medicines and about uh, discipline uh, construction group of uh, psychosomatic medicines and uh, holistic health group and uh, psychosomatic Chinese medicine and the psychosomatic regulation group, regulation group and the psychosomatic psychotherapy, psychotherapy and uh, about uh, anxiety, anxiety and the rela related disorders group. Quality uh, crisis intervention group, sleep disorders group, and eating disorders group, psychosomatic nursing group. CSPM has established 20 sub-professional cooperation study group.
是它的 group。Now, uh, secondly, the current uh, current uh, cl clinical model of uh, psychosomatic medicine in China. Now, model one, model one, uh, is establishment of the department of uh, psychosomatic medicine in a general hospital and uh, in psychiatry hospital, department of uh, psychosomatics. Now, uh, general hospital is, for example, Zhongda Hospital and Tongji Hospital and Sichuan Province People's Hospital and the psychiatry hospital is Shanghai Mental Health Center and Huzhou Third People's Hospital. Model two is about health alliance, alliance. for example, Oriental Alliance of Psychosomatic Medicines. medicines. Uh, for example, is the uh, grassroots hospital and the third level hospital from from a main uh, medical association, a medical alliance, alliance, and the third level hospital regularly sends expense, ex expense, expense to the glass roads hospital to send the uh, to see the outer patients survive survives survives uh, model three model three uh, multi discipline discipline team is MDT MDT for example, in, in MDT and the post ICU patient MDT and the tumor, 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 tumor MDT and the, for example about about mind heart clinic clinic and the pain mind clinic. Pay money click. Model four. Model four is about discuss discussion on different uh, difficult cases. For example, a psychologist joined and the psychiatrist joined a leading department and a mental de department joined and together discuss. Uh, discussion on difficult cases. Mod model four, uh, model five, is psychosomatic uh, network was allowed. Was allowed. For example, uh, one hospital provide uh, difficult uh, cases, and the national experts experts uh, participated. Participated in the discussion online. Online. Model six is world row with psychologist uh, joined. Psychologist joined. Uh, psychiatrist or psychologists participate. Participate. Uh, participate in world routes, world routes and the clinical diagnosis and the treatment of a, a certain speciality, speciality. For example, psychiatrists uh, participate in ICU work, in ICU work. Model six, it means Sunday Hospital, Sunday Hospital. Based idea of uh, grand psychologist investigation in Sunday Hospital, 
in Sunday Hospital. Uh, Sunday Hospital initiated by uh, West China Hospital. West China Hospital. Psychologist, uh, psychological school, screening, screening was carried out for all inpatients in the hospital, in the hospital. Uh, once abnormal patients were found, were found. Psychiatrists were involved in a timely manner, in timely manner, and give some uh, advice for the patients, uh, abnormal patients. So we are talking about uh, class classification and the di diagnosis critical uh, criteria of psych uh, somatic related uh, related disorders in China. Now, de development of a Chinese class uh, classification of mental disorders before. Uh, 1982, uh, no uh, somatic, uh, psychosomatic disorders before. In 1982, classification of mental disorders of CMA, Chinese Medical Association, in 1982. It would include included psychosomatics medicines, uh, disorders, uh, dis, dis, disease, and the last, last category of mental disorder for the first time. For the time in 1999, uh, in CCMD2, we have a uh, about C, psycho, uh, physiological disorders, no, no losses, and the psychogenic mental disorders is uh, uh, category six, and uh, mental disorders associated with the central disorders category one include part in CCMD2. Then uh, 21 is about uh, physiological disorders related to uh, psychology, uh, uh, psychology uh, factors, category six, and uh, or, or organic mental disorders, Category, uh, category, category one include party in CCM, um, CCM2 uh, suit. So then it's about uh, 2017, CCPM1 uh, and uh, uh, 2019, CCPM2 and uh, 2021. Uh, CCPM uh, 2R, 2R. Now, um, uh, here is about CCPM1, is about uh, psychology, psychology related disorders. This is uh, CCPM uh, was set up by uh, CSPM, CSPM, is about uh, five, uh, uh, classifications. So classification is about uh, uh, psychosomatic reactions. Psychosomatic uh, manifestation, manifestation, and uh, uh, so I call uh, phys physiological disorders relate, related to psychology factors and the psychosomatic disease is a physical disease 
a company psychosomatic symptoms is about the five, five classifications. CCPM2 is about uh, nine, nine uh, classifications. The case is about uh, uh, psychosomatic reaction disorders, psychosomatic uh, many facilitation disorders, uh, uh, sim symptoms, symptoms, so psychosomatic symptoms disorders. It means about uh, psychological somatic disorders and psychosomatic uh, mental disorders is to uh, uh, three uh, classification is a means psychosomatic pedigree disorders is physical disorders related to psychological factors is about eating disorder sleep sleep disorders and sexual dis uh, dysfunction dysfunction is stress related psychosomatic disorders uh, physical symptom uh, symptom related related psychosomatic disorders and the mental disorders uh, closed related to psychosomatic disorders is about this uh, uh, depressive disorders as other disorders uh, OCD opposite uh, obsessive compulsive disorders is about mental disorders due to uh, physical disease and the psychosomatic sy syndromes syndrome syndrome is about hell is about the uh, new uh, feature feature of the new classification the first is a uh, uh, psychosomatic reaction was uh, changed to psychosomatic reaction disorders uh, continues uh, spectrum spectrum is about uh, psychosomatic reaction disorders and psychosomatic symptoms disorders and psychosomatic disorders. Se uh, second is about make clear make clear that psychosomatic many facilitation disorders is equal to traditional psychosomatic disorders. Third is stress related uh, psychosomatic disorders was listed uh, separately, including ICU syndrome and uh, uh, cancer related psychosomatic disorders and uh, Uranium, uranium related psychosomatic disorders and occupational psychosomatic ex, ex hesitation, hesitation at all, at all. And the mental disorders related to, related to psychosomatics was about uh, uh, this, uh, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, and obsessive. Uh, so uh, compulsive disorders and the mental disorders due to uh, physical disorders and they include uh, individual tools uh, subtypes and the first is about uh, 19 symptoms syndrome in solid categories and they include for the third time Uh, on CC, uh, CCPM2R two, uh, two R is on the base of CCPM2 was revised the uh, items of individual diagnosis and we, we added two cap, uh, categories in anxiety disorders. Uh, one was uh, health anxiety disorders and the other was uh, test anxiety disorders. Uh, for, uh, fourth is about uh, uh, 
stand di uh, di diagnosis and treatment guidelines of uh, psychosomatic related disorders in China. Here is about uh, uh, in ma March this year, we published the, the guide guideline. Guideline. The guideline is have about uh, uh, seven uh, catalog. Catalog is about uh, overview and uh, even invention and di diagnosis and the psycho uh, therapy, psycho uh, physical therapy and the medication and the common psycho uh, psychosomatic related disorders in clinical parts is about uh, epileptics. Epileptics. Here in, in the epileptics, we uh, publishing uh, push it and the same uh, full scores is the PHQ9, JD7, and the PHQ15, and the PSS is. Uh, here is about the <coughs> PSS is uh, we published the, uh, the score. The score is uh, uh, very good uh, uh, reliability uh, and the valid uh, validity of PSSS is about uh, 26 uh, not items items. Then we about uh, 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 published uh, uh, PSS um, 10 PSS 10 uh, PSS 10 uh, have uh, a uh, very good uh, reliability, reliability and uh, valid validity, and uh, had a good uh, can can relationship can relation uh, with the PSS twenty six twenty six. Uh, uh, fifth is about uh, research progress of psychosomatic medicine in China. Uh, psychosomatic is about uh, 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 in uh, gastroenterology is about Chinese has established the dog, uh, digestion mind body alliance alliance. We talk about uh, study the pain counter axis axis axis. Then is about Chinese ex experts experts can census on psychology uh, prescription of uh, patients in uh, cardiovascular department is about a study a brain heart axis is study of uh, uh, shima is a, a, a brain uh, brain disease brain disease is a, of a brain uh, brain Long, long axis, axis. Here we are talk about after G, GCPT, the abnormal uh, spon, spon, spontaneous brain activity of uh, by later later since uh, uh, motor uh, cortex in asymptomatic uh, uh, patients was revised, was revised, was published in. GPS uh, to seven, uh, 17 is about talk about a uh, uh, brain kind of axis about uh, uh, psychosomatics in the map knowledge is about uh, brain skin uh, axis about uh, in in China uh, we put forward the consensus of uh, Chinese experts on clinic diagnosis and treatment of uh, fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is the first Chinese uh, forum on Dep Dep uh, Department of Development of Psychosomatic Medi uh, Medicine of Rheumatology. At the last, we are so uh, psychosomatic disease in uh, new knowledge uh, research on PSD. PSD. We have uh, developed the guideline for PSD in China. In China.
At last, we are talking about the high quali uh, quality development of psychosomatic medicine in China. Uh, first, the uh, urgent need to establish psychosomatic medicine department in general hospital in China. The need of the government to ensure the people's mental and uh, physical health. The necessary conditions for the established for new deployment uh, discipline has been made at uh, present in China. Uh, uh, what environment, environment of the psychosomatic medicine department we are talking about uh, the word is uh, open, open words, open words, not uh, uh, closed words. The, uh, staff uh, composition of psychosomatic not only not only uh, uh, doctors, uh, psych psychiatrists, uh, doctors, and nurses, uh, but uh, also include uh, psychosomatic uh, the rapist, rapist, psychosomatic rehabilitation uh, speci uh, specialist, and the nose, and the nose. And diagnosis and the treatment uh, score of psychosomatic uh, medicines in different uh, uh, doctors. A general, uh, a general uh, practitioner is about uh, from one to uh, four. And the uh, uh, psychosomatic uh, this, uh, medicine doctor is from uh, 1 to 12. A psychiatrist doctor is 1 to uh, 15, uh, uh, 14, 14, 14. As uh, uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, software, software construction of a uh, somatic medicine department. And they uh, use a risk assessment tools and uh, strengths uh, safety ma management. And the Chinese uh, standardized diagnosis and treatment gu uh, guideline for the uh, psychosomatic related disorders to treatment. And the uh, uh, pressing uh, matter of the moment is a chain quality uh, psychotherapist and the chain Quali uh, quali uh, qualified psychosomatic rehabilitation uh, specific, uh, specialists and the use of uh, mature psychosomatic mental uh, treatment plan and the current uh, curriculum to develop uh, specialists in psychosomatic medicine and the pre uh, preparation and the publication of the guideline and the uh, book and the book call out psychosomatic medicine research about uh, uh, several uh, research research and uh, a finding magazine magazine a journal and uh, to publish to publish uh, about uh, uh, magazine or journal promote international Exchange and cooperations operation, uh, and uh, we are uh, want to uh, set up the psychosomatic medicine uh, the department department constructing the objective of the discipline in Chinese government. We look forward to holding the contest. Contest ACPM conference of offline in Nanjing in August 2023. Thank you very much. That's all. You are finished. I cannot. Listen, Professor Yang Yuan. So, thank you very much. Very interesting report. And Father, 
also with special respect, I convey the word to President, our Vice President of Baikal Psychosomatic Association, Professor Lubov Rychkova. We are honored to hold the 19th Congress of the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine in Irkutsk and to share our studies in the Psychosomatic Medicine in Irkutsk and to and to share our the Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine in Irkutsk and to share our studies in this sphere with you. Traditionally, we focus on diagnostic, rehabilitation and prevention of the disease which mostly occur due to psychological factors. Using these knowledges, we can develop complex and psychological rehabilitation for our young patients. Of course, we use the interdisciplinary approach in our studies. We use personalized approach to diagnostic in our psychosomatic studies. And what is more, we develop individual approaches to prevention and rehabilitation. So it's pediatrics. We have discovered special characteristic of cognitive activity in children with hypertension. One group of cognitive functions, its attention, speech, verbal memory, turns out to be disordered. While the other group, visual memory, visual special functions, is developing within the reference ranges. The nature, nature of change in the interhemispheric interactions and cognitive impairment give evidence of reduced resource capacity of the left hemisphere and um, intact functional capacity of the right hemisphere. When arterial hypertension and obesity are combined with apnea syndrome, we have noted severe disorders of sleep, homeostasis and change of the sleep EEG pattern such as an increased number of cyclical alternation and um, uh, sleep spindles. We consider this change as a compensatory response of sleep regulation mechanisms to the hypoxia and excessive erosion of the central nervous system. However, the continuance of the disease and progressive impairment of the comorbid state led to the decrease in the cognitive functions, memory, attention, and speech in the future. Obesity is uh, often associated with psychological and psychosocial problems. We showed that adolescents who seek medical attention with regard to obesity actually have significant decrease of the health-related quality of life. Interesting results were obtained during the study of the health-related uh, quality of life in a sample of uh, school children residing of rural areas of the uh, Republic of Buryatia. It can be said that the obesity significantly decreases the uh, health-related life quality of rural adolescents of um, the uh, Caucasian race but does not influence the life quality of adolescents of Mongoloid race. It means that obesity prevention programs, at least for adolescents residing in rural areas with strong culture traditions, should have ethno-specific nature. Girls life quality in all domains except for social function is lower than boys life quality. Analysis results show that low the health-related quality of life of the 10th graders in general 
academic schools is uh, associated with the family gender, chronic disease, bad living conditions, al alcohol abuse in the family, time spent off watching TV. Inverse association with the life quality was shown from sport activities and the length of time spent outdoors. Multidimensional analysis confirmed the significance of the association with the life quality only for gender, bad living conditions and duration of screen time. We have been conducting molecular genetic studies of gut microbiome of adolescents with normal weight and obesity uh, since 2015. Microbiome profiling of gut biotope of adolescents suffering of obesity revealed decreased number of unique phenotypes, decline in indices of diversity and richness of species, disorder of the normosinosis structure. This biotic state of the gut biosinosis having features typical for early start of artificial feeding, remains and changes in adolescents of additional and control groups. Personalized approaches are implemented in the development of programs for rehabilitation of children suffering from psychosomatic disease. During the pandemic, we have developed a psychodiagnostic box for parents whose children have recovered from COVID-19. We have developed a chart for psychological diagnostic of children who recovered from COVID-19. The frequency and duration of clinical symptoms of COVID-19 in adolescents are presented in the table. It was found out that uh, half of respondents had the following clinical symptoms. Fever, rhinorrhea, cough, sore throat, fatigue, anosmia, dysgeia, headache, especially the head frontal region. 24 adolescents had anosmia that lasted from two to 64 weeks after recovery from COVID-19. 22 adolescents had dysgeia, taste disorder, that lasted from two to 64 weeks after recovery from COVID-19. Were symptoms that lasted from one to 28 weeks after COVID-19 are the following weakness, apathy, loss of appetite, nausea, sensitive, don't ache. Dear colleagues, uh, this slide presents the methods of complex psychosomatic correction used in our center. We found the frequency of depressive disorders associated with hyperandrogenism. A model for the occurrence of psycho-emotional disorders in women with hyperandrogenism has been developed. We also developed a prototype calculator of psycho-emotional disorders probability in women. We found out that olfaction disorder in the form of moderator or severe haposmia and anosmia in pregnant women with COVID-19 is significantly higher than in women without COVID-19. Moreover, Severe haposmia and anosmia is 2.5 times after an impregnant woman with uh, COVID-19 as compared with pregnant women without COVID-19. Test disorders 
in pregnant women with COVID-19, a occasional end of mild nature. They do not differ from disorders in women with normal course of pregnancy. By a load at the level of uh, 17, uh, 700, uh, 9, 9, 94 LNA copies of virus SARS-CoV-2 as indication of COVID-19 severity proved important in relation to infection disorders manifestation. Therefore, um, three short cycle value less um, than 47 in routine PSR based diagnostic of COVID 19 can be an ad additional predictor of olfaction dysfunction. We conducted studies to assess the quality of life in women of post reproductive age after recovery from symptoms free form of COVID-19 and uh, 12 months uh, after recovery from a moderate form of COVID-19. The analysis showed severe empowerment of physical and emotional health women after recovery from the moderate form of COVID-19, while the patients who recovered from symptom-free form of COVID-19 might have better body's protective functions. Studies in 403 women of two ethnic groups at the age of 45, uh, 60 showed high frequency of sleep disorders, which increased from perimenopause to postmenopause. Presomniac disorders, difficulties in falling asleep, as well as postsomniac disorders, difficulties in awakening in the morning, are typical for Russian patients during Basic research in psychosomatic medicine. Introduction. At present, there is a lack of basic research activities in psychosomatic medicine, though there are many available areas open for basic researchers. Basic research in psychosomatic medicine is directed towards delineating the biological mechanism which are responsible in producing biopsychosocial, behavioral, and ecological factors of psychosomatic disorder. Areas for basic research available in psychosomatic medicine. Advancement in basic research in psychosomatic medicine has been possible and is best with the advancement of following areas. First, neuroscience. Canon in 1928 suggested that the physiology of emotion provides a key link between mental status and physical disease. Papage in 1937 published the first neurological model of emotion that involved circuit of cortical and subcortical structures. McLean in 1949 coined the term of limbic system and suggested psychosomatics disorder are caused by impaired communication between the limbic system and cortex. The method and means of continuing basic uh, research in psychosomatic disorder were enhanced by the advancement in neuroimaging, the development of CT, MRI, EEG, ERPS, PET, fMRI, SPECT magnetic stethoscopy, and TMS. The above discoveries made it easier to study impaired communication between the limbic system and cortex. The relationship of the brain and psychosomatic disorders 
became easier with the world neurosciences discoveries and advancement. Research in cognitive neuroscience, a study of emotion and body changes became possible for understanding of the biological basis of psychosomatic disorders. Neurotransmitter system with genetic influence brought knowledge of the information transfer system which helped to explain the biological basis of psychosomatic disorder. Engel's biopsychosocial model also provided further areas of basic research and brought psychosomatic medicine near medical research. Sukla, Solomon, and Dosi also saw this model, model in Ayurveda, the ancient Hindu medicine which dates back to millennium, and saw the vulnerabilities related to the biopsychosocial model. Ayurveda also describes natural acquired immunity. Increasing knowledge of autoimmune nervous system, relationship with the endocrine system, particularly the hypothermic pituitary adrenal cortical system, brought the opportunity of advancing basic study in anxiety and affective aspect of psychosomatic disorder. The continued advance of imaging provided the visualization of brain structure and sequences of changes were by psychological event are followed by physical event of psychosomatic disorder. The pathological expression of biological, psychological, and sociological parameter of human health and illness started to reveal sequences in the brain. Second, advancement in psychoneuroimmunology. Solomon in 1993 emphasized the importance of role immunology in psychosomatic uh, and describe the involvement of immunology in psychosomatic disorders. He called it psychoneuroimmunology. Solomon described psychoneuroimmunology to represent conceptual breakthrough for understanding the body and its health and disorder in psychosomatic medicine. Solomon also postulated integrative or holistic approach for continuing basic research in psychosomatic medicine. Burnett, Medvar, Jones, Siley, Millers, and Kubo have with the research stabilized the scientific link between immunology, stress, anxiety, and affective aspect of psychosomatic disorder. The basic research done in human and animal studies enhanced the opportunity of enlarging the basic research in psychosomatic medicine. Bidirectional involvement of immune system and CNS were confirmed by the above basic research. This has started a new era of the role of immunology and psychosomatic disorder which also involved the brain. There, there, these were window of understanding the changes essential for triggering psychosomatic disorders. Miller's research on thymus provided the basis base of research in beta cells, their interaction, and the involvement of relative receptors. The finding of other NK cells which are sensitive to psychosocial influence, confirm the close relationship with psychosomatic medicine and immune system. Dunbar in 1948 postulated that a specific conflict and the resultant specific pattern of personality style with egosyntonic attempts underlay a number of psychosomatic disorders. Dunbar founded the American Psychosomatic Society and its journal. Dunbar brought the focus on peptic ulcer, hypertension, rheumatoid arthritis, and asthma. These diseases became an essential part of psychosomatic medicine. 
Burnett and Solomon suggested that brain research in immunology is part of psychosomatic medicine. And Solon, Solomon confirmed the idea of the presence of immunoregulators in the brain. Solomon and Moss in 1964 published Emotion, Immunity and Disease, in which they suggested that central nervous system and psychic process could influence immunity. Kubo, in his research on animal, put the animal under various stressors and confirmed the influence and changes in immune function. The bidirectional interaction of the immune system and CS has been confirmed by Adder and Cohen in 1975 through conditioned immunity changes in natural killer cells and uh, cytokines in Trolican 1. The immune system has been involved in various psychosomatic and psychiatric disorders like depression, HIV, cancer, and CBS. Shiley in 1946 brought the important issue of stress and its consequences related to producing psychosomatic disorder. Besides emphasizing hypothalamic pituitary axis, he also explained the neurohumoral model, which included neuropeptide involvement in stress. He also expressed, explained the process of coping mechanism. Third, advances in genetic and uh, epigenetic areas. Identification of causative gene or genes or a specific susceptible genes remain a challenging area of basic research in psychosomatic medicine. However, most of the psychosomatic disorders tend to have polygenic basis. Multi, that means multiple gene involvement rather than monogenic, that means single gene involvement. Recent research for curative treatment has involved the role of somatic gene editing and germline gene editing. In psychosomatic medicine, somatic gene editing can be used for preventing and treating psychosomatic disorder and somatic gene editing has been accepted without much controversy, but involvement of germline editing remains a controversial and problematic. Epigenesis. The basic research in this area involves studying the genes interaction with environment and outside factor, which can play important part in improving, preventing, or successfully stopping the process of psychosomatic disorder. Epigenesis recognizes the changes produced by the interaction of gene with environmental factors, which is very important for psychosomatic disorder as base of psychosomatic disorders include the combination of genes and environmental factors. The study of epigenesis and the genetic basis of psychosomatic disorder is described by Singh in 2010, 2011, and 2017. Singh in 2017 has summarized the psychosomatic disorder, particularly the influence of environmental and outsider, outside factor on genetic material from the very beginning through the whole life. They are observed thus showing the involvement of ongoing epigenetic process. In most psychosomatic disorders, the etiological window can be revealed by epigenetic research activity. Psychopharmacological area available for basic research studies. Psychopharmacological advancements are primarily for hoping the for helping the treatment through through they have led the understanding of etiological and preventive aspect of some psychosomatic disorder neuropathological changes involvement of receptor system 
neurotransmitter, neural pathways, and neural pathway identification are part of basic research. The connective studies of neurotransmitter system, genetic influence, epigenetic changes, and information transfer system can also be researched in psychopharmacological area to understand the psychopathopharmacology of psychosomatic disorders or understand the further advanced changes in psychosomatic disorder. The antecedent of psychopharmacology are multiple and this rapidly developing English branch of science provides further information for psychosomatic disorder and the relationship with brain. This provides greater opportunity to find the etiology of psychosomatic disorder. Conclusion, basic research for understanding psychosomatic disorder has become essential and basic research in above described areas are sure to be rewarding but challenging. The involvement of the brain, the ultimate controller of sickness, health, and production of psychosomatic disorder needs to be studied as fulsome as possible. However, the following guideline for enhancing the interest in basic research in psychosomatic medicine is helpful. First, establishing the need for basic research activities in psychosomatic disorder to provide optimal evidence-based management to suffering patients. Two, type of research needed to improve the treatment regime of psychosomatic disorders. A, basic research in psychosomatic disorder to discover the etiological factor and be the basic research activity which can motivate or improve the management and treatment of psychosomatic patients. Third, basic research areas are available a biological, psychological, social and ecological and the combined areas of above, reflecting the epigenetic factor in psychosomatic medicine. The criteria for basic research includes evidence-based finding in basic research and with a goal to enhance the management of psychosomatic disorders. Utilizing non-pharmacological therapy, culture and country-based therapies are required to bring holistic success in human suffering. Thank you so much, Professor And, and uh, now the third representative of our Baikal Psychosomatic Association, Vice President Farid Bilalov, main points of psychosomatic medicine. Uh, hello, everyone. I am professor of Department of Geriatrics and Pharmacology in the Russian Medical Academy for, of Continuous Education. Uh, the title of my presentation is The Main Points of Psychosomatic Medicine. Uh, the aim of this presentation is to generalize the results of psychosomatic studies in short uh, 12 points, uh, despite of a lot of controversy about psychosomatic research. Uh, point one, uh, comorbid somatic and mental diseases are often detected. Uh, in the largest European population study, mental disorders were registered in 38% uh, of population, included anxiety disorders in 18% and depressive disorders in uh, 6%. Uh, here you can see study of US veteran population. Veterans with comorbid post-traumatic stress disorder and major depressive disorder are more likely to have heart diseases compared to those with depressive disorders only or no mental disorders. Uh, point two, uh, bidirectional connections 
are manifested by increased risk of somatic diseases in patients with mental disorders or on the contrary. In recent years, uh, several observational studies have confirmed bidirectional association between uh, somatic diseases and mental disorders. Uh, here you can see that uh, on the one hand, uh, the presence of depressions increases the risk of diabetes and heart failure. And on the other hand, diabetes or heart failure increases the risk of depression. Uh, mental and somatic diseases are closely related and associated through many somatic, mental and behavioral factors. Uh, point three, uh, mental disorders don't cause organic diseases. At the same time, the latter can be cause of mental disorders. In other psychosomatic works, it is postulated that common uh, diseases uh, as uh, hypertension, asthma, peptic ulcer, rheumatoid arthritis are caused by stress. Uh, this assumption uh, has not been supported by reliable studies. Uh, it is known that some medical conditions such as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, <coughs> cobalamin deficiency, thyroid dysfunction, concussion disease, is often manifested by mental symptoms and disorders. <clears throat> Increased use of psychotropic drugs in uh, cushion disease was observed before diagnosis and remained elevated regardless of remission status. Uh, this study highlights the importance of early diagnosis of cushion disease and the need for long-term monitoring on mental health. Uh, point four, <clears throat> mental disorder and symptoms are common in patients with dysfunctional symptoms and diseases. Uh, functional dyspepsia and uh, irritable bowel syndrome are very frequent among population. Uh, recently, you heard a brilliant, profound report of Shin Fukuda. Uh, thank you for this splendid report. Uh, patients with irritable bowel syndrome have two or threefold increased risk of either anxiety or depressive disorders compared to healthier subjects. Uh, prevalence of anxiety and depressive disorders in patients with irritable bowel syndrome is the same at uh, 23% in this study. Uh, point five, uh, mental disorders worsen the prognosis of comorbid somatic diseases, increase disability, uh, reduce quality of life, often to a greater extent than somatic diseases. Uh, there are a huge number of studies showing the negative impact of common mental disorders on comorbid somatic diseases. Uh, current randomized studies show that uh, more severe depression is associated with a higher cardiovascular risk in patients after acute coronary syndrome. Uh, point six, mental disorders are associated with increased overall and cardiovascular mortality. Increased all-cause and cardiovascular mortality in patients with mental disorders is explained by increased risk of atherosclerotic diseases, uh, loss control of risk factors, and also reduced adherence to treatment. Uh, in this observational study of more than 5 million Denmark individuals, uh, shorter life expectancy was associated with comorbid mental disorders and general medical conditions uh, compared to with entire population and with patients who, uh, who had either mental disorders only or general medical conditions only. Uh, point seven, uh, mental disorders can manifest symptoms similar to symptoms of somatic diseases and enhance the severity of somatic symptoms. Uh, for instance, uh, relationship between depression and pain anxiety and palpitation is well known. Depressive and anxiety disorders show strong association with somatic diseases and symptoms. Also, anxiety and depression can exacerbate somatic symptoms. This phenomenon is described as somatosensory amplification. Point eight, patients with mental disorders reported more medical visits to GP hospitalization with somatic diseases, and use more medical resources. Uh, patients uh, who unreasonably often visit doctors present a big problem uh, because use limited health resources. Uh, among recent for frequent visitors, 30% uh, 
uh, of cases of medic, uh, mental disorders and 15% uh, of life stresses. Uh, depression is associated with a high risk of hospitalization, long length of stay, and a higher admission risk. Uh, point nine, mental disorders reduce patient satisfaction with treatment and adherence to treatment. Uh, the implementation of doctor's recommendations can reduce morbidity and mortality uh, compared uh, with patients who uh, don't follow medical advices. At the same time, mental disorders had a greater effect of adherence treatment than comorbid somatic diseases. Uh, this study shown, uh, that, uh, has shown that depression is associated with medication adherence following acute coronary syndrome. Uh, point 10. Uh, treatment of depression can reduce uh, the frequency of somatic events and hospitalizations. Uh, treatment of depression with antidepressants and cognitive behavioral therapy is effective in patients with somatic diseases. Besides, uh, treatment of depression can decrease cardiovascular mobility and mortality. And uh, among patients with depression following recent acute coronary syndrome, treatment with escitalopram compared to placebo resulted in a lower risk of major adverse cardiac events in this randomized trial. Uh, point 11. Uh, psychotropic drugs can uh, influence on severity of somatic diseases. For example, some antipsychotics and antidepressants uh, can increase QT interval and risk of sudden arrhythmic death. Uh, in this study, the risk of recurrent cardiac arrhythmic events associated to with uh, antidepressants is higher in patients with long QT syndrome type 1. And uh, last point, 12, um, uh, physical diseases can reduce the effect of mental diseases treatment and treatment of somatic diseases can affect mental state and change psychotropic therapy outcome. Now, severe somatic diseases can reduce social, professional, and everybody opportunities of patients uh, that affect their mental health. Effective treatment of somatic diseases can improve not only physical, but also mental quality of life. It's important to take into account drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Now, when omeprazole is used with escitalopram, a half-dose reduction of escitalopram should be made. Uh, and uh, last slide, uh, Siberian psychosomatics hope that the future we will meet in Baikal. Uh, this is my recent photo of the wildlife of Baikal, where the mother duck is a CPM and the little duckling is a Baikal Psychosomatic Association. Uh, thank you for attention. Any question? <laughs> Question only in writing form. Thank you, Farid. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Farid Ismagilovich Bilalov, Russia. And our last report, our last message. Uh, I announce it with special respect. Professor Masata Murakami, he was the president of uh, previous Congress in Tokyo when I was guest. Psychosocial factors related to chronic, prolonged and complex fibromyalgia. Please, Professor. First of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude to Professor Sobenikov and many Russian colleagues who prepared and promoted this meeting on Asian College of Psychosomatic Medicine during the time when there were many international difficult problems. I will talk about fibromyalgia, which is one of the typical psychosomatic disorder with the title, Psychosocial Factors Related to Chronic, Prolonged and Complex Fibromyalgia. Before I get into my presentation, I would like to briefly mention about the first time I met Professor Sobenikov in 2015, when I was president of the 56th annual meeting of the Japan Society of Psychosomatic Medicine. Professor Sobenikov was introduced by Professor Eruk Hagubasuren, who used to be the president of the Mongolian College of Psychosomatic Medicine, 
to participate in the international session of our society and gave a lecture on psychopathological analysis and the grouping of disorders with somatization. I was very pleased to know that the development of psychosomatic medicine is also being remarkable in Russia. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude for your visit to Japan and your contribution to our society seven years ago. Now, I would like to consider which psychosocial factors may affect the lifelong prognosis of fibromyalgia. This is the background of today's discussion. Fibromyalgia is one of the common diseases among the chronic pain disorders, characterized by the long-lasting widespread musculoskeletal pain of the whole body and various unidentified com complaints. Since the onset and the clinical cause of fibromyalgia involve genetic background and personal constitution, such as mental and physical disorders and psychosocial factors, it is very important to consider the psychosomatic aspect of the patient with fibromyalgia. It is important to consider which psychosocial factors may affect the lifelong prognosis of fibromyalgia for diagnosis and treatment. Fibromyalgia has not only musculoskeletal pain, but also a variety of complaints of the whole body, such as gastrointestinal symptoms, IBS-like symptoms, sleep disturbances, headache including muscle contraction and migraine, this mineral air in the mature women, autonomic nervous imbalance, and many comorbid symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. Therefore, care for differential diagnosis across the whole clinical area is required. Fibromyalgia is a psychosomatic disease that belongs to the category of functional somatic syndrome and has many comorbid symptoms with other chronic psychosomatic diseases. The Japan College of Fibromyalgia Investigation made the definition of fibromyalgia as follows. In the guidelines for clinical practice of fibromyalgia 2017, fibromyalgia is a peculiar rheumatic disease belonging to the functional somatic syndromes with unexplained chronic pain and generalized stiffness as the main symptom in a wide area of the body, accompanied by the variety of physical, neurological, and psychiatric symptoms as concomitant symptoms and abnormality that cannot be found in clinical tests, including physical examination and general imaging examination. A variety of factors are involved in the pathogenesis of fibromyalgia, including genetics and their predisposition, and health conditions such as exhaustion, muscle fatigue, and trauma, and psychological background, so-called fibrocytic personality, like neurotic, compulsive, and aggressive personality trait is also involved. On the other hand, Exogenous and environmental codes, such as autonomic imbalance, autoimmune, and viral infection can be triggered for onset. Additionally, biased lifestyle with the background of characteristic traits, such as perfectionism, overactivity, overadaptive, and alexithymic behavior may play an important role. Therefore, Combination of biological factors and psychosocial factors are likely to be involved in the pathogenesis of fibromyalgia as presented in this slide. In the report of Hudson, 71% of the patients with fibromyalgia had a history of depression and 64% of the patients experienced depression for one year or longer before the onset of fibromyalgia. 
Seripatum et al. also discuss that individuals with chronic pain develop not only sleep disturbance, but also pain-related severity and depression. We speculate that mental illness is probably most strongly involved in the long-term prognosis of fibromyalgia. We experienced 60 cases of onset of fibromyalgia during treatment for many psychiatric disorders and chronic fatigue syndromes. Out of 60 cases, we found 20 cases in the major depression, 19 cases in the bipolar 2, 5 cases in the panic disorder, 3 cases in the social anxiety disorder, 3 cases in the adjustment disorder, 10 cases were during the treatment of chronic fatigue syndrome. As shown in this slide, complication with emotional disorders, including depression and type 2 bipolar disorder, would be the largest modified factor. Actually, similarity of fibromyalgia and depression has been observed by our investigation. We measured the concentration of monoamines in the urine stored for 12 hours of patients with fibromyalgia and depression and compared the difference. We found that the concentration of vanillic mandelic acid, VMA, which is metabolite of total catecholamine, MHPG, which is metabolite of norepinephrine, 5-HAAA, which is metabolite of serotonin, are significantly lower in fibromyalgia patients than healthy control individuals. And similar findings were obtained in patients with depression, as shown in the slide. This is a finding suggesting similarity between fibromyalgia and depression. Acylcarnitin, involved in the glycolysis of the mitochondrial system, is engaged in energy production of skeletal muscle and plays an important role in the neuronal activity of the brain. A decrease in serum acylcarnitin level is associated with lassitude, fatigability, forgetfulness, and poor concentration in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. Our study found that patients with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and depressive disorders had lower level of serum acylcarnitine concentration compared to healthy individuals, which suggests that there is a commonality between pain, fatigue, and depression. Next, the relationship between chronic pain and personal factors such as behavioral and personality trait were discussed, especially relationship between the chronic pain and overactivity. Andrew discussed that the hypersensitization of the nervous system in individuals suffering from chronic pain with overactivity leads to sleep disturbance and depression. Andrew also discussed that Individuals with overactivity are often perfectionist or have obsessive personalities, which can be a barrier to activity pacing. Characteristic personality may be involved in the formation of the emotion. Our research also shows that obsessive compulsive thinking and perfectionism in fibromyalgia patients are dominantly strong compared with healthy control individuals. Such property cause excessive attachment, overactivity, which leads to sleep disturbance, overload and muscle and physical exhaustion and chronic pain. This tendency is also observed by personality inventory questionnaire. Personality traits that exceed 20% tiles in the inventory are displayed in this table. We speculate these personal characteristics such as nervousness, cytosemia, and compulsive may be involved in many mental disorders and prolongation of pain 
and various symptoms of patients with fibromyalgia. These mental illnesses discussed above are commonly associated with obsessive, compulsive, and perfectionism. Even if not mental illness, these personal characteristics are thought to be greatly related to the formation of chronic pain. We are focusing on the vicious cycle of pain, behavior, and daily distress in life. So many factors are involved in formation of vicious cycle of pain that has turned into a negative chain. Personality traits such as mental dysfunction, perfectionism, compulsive, obsessive, and nervous personality may develop a hypersensitive perception of critical system, muscle spasm all over the body, and various physical symptoms. A vicious cycle is formed through involvement in neurological, immune, endocrinological system, and daily dysfunction. In order to break this vicious cycle, some kind of psychological approach, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, will be necessary. I would like to advocate the idea of activity pacing as a method against overactivity characteristic of chronic pain patient. Nielsen suggests that activity pacing is characterized by dividing tasks into smaller pieces, taking short breaks, and slowing down. Nicholas suggests that the activity pacing dividing housework into smaller tasks and take 10 minutes break after completing each task. Activity pacing is one of the core components of cognitive behavior therapy for individuals with chronic pain. Now, how can we control the overactivity caused by such compulsiveness and perfectionism? We often recognize typical words often spoken by patients suggestive of overactivity, like everything should be perfect, don't rest and get it down, complete through to the end, feeling guilty for doing nothing, etc. I try to make an instruction for fibromyalgia patient to do work, exercise, and play to divide into four or five pieces of action. Like when swimming 100 meters, repeat the cycle of swimming 25 meters and resting for five minutes, four times. When going up to the stairs with heavy luggage, take a break in the middle of the stairs consciously. By repeatedly giving such advice, patient will be able to consciously control their unconscious behavior. This is the result of my presentation. Comorbidity with functional somatic syndrome psychiatric disorder should be always in consideration for diagnosis and treatment. Personality traits such as perfectionism, compulsiveness, obsessiveness, and related distorted lifestyle may involve in the formation of variable symptom of fibromyalgia. Long-time psychoeducation and training for self-management of personality traits are essential for fundamental treatment. Activity pacing to control overactivity is very important to prevent lifelong prognosis of fibromyalgia. Thank you for your attention. I'm very happy if you have any comment or question. Thank you so much, Professor Masata Murakami. That's all from our plenary session. Thank you so much, all speakers and participations. We had very interesting reports that will definitely help us in our future scientific and practical activities. Now we have a short break for only 
23 minutes and then work sections.